Okay, let's see what the pots do. Next, we'll figure out how this code works. There's still a few things that I haven't quite figured out, but I mean, in essence, it's two different timers interacting, producing a, uh, a waveform, and then that adjusted in, that base waveform adjusted in frequency. These are interesting. So there are three different modes that the uh, software can operate in. It can, it can output um, one of the potentiometers as either a um, pentatonic mapping so that the frequency with which the grains are being um, written out is uh, incremented in a stepwise manner. So for the pentatonic, it uses the pentatonic scale roughly. I'm not sure exactly where some of these numbers came from, but I'll trust them. And then you can also do it um, diatonic or chromatically. So pentatonic, chromatic, and then also there's logarithmic. So it's a, a linear function, more linear function. So it maps into um, a sensitive range of the logs. And I does some interesting things with bit shifting, and I'm not 100% sure what all of it does and yet, but it's I'm sure it's very clever tricks for doing fast divisions and multiplications. Anyways, um, that's what these things are. So basically you've got a collection of values and then it's taking a certain... So this input comes from the uh, potentiometer, so there's a... Uh, there's... Uh, the analog inputs are... Um, where is it? Analog read. There's an analog read down there anyways. So 0 to 1028. Uh, uh, 10... <laughs> And you have to map those onto, well, in this case, it's a, I think it's the knee of the log, um, but I'm not 100% sure where the log is because it's trimming bits off here and then oaring it with, or anding it with um, this string here, I'm, and I'm not sure what that actually is. Um, it makes it con more con sound more continuous. It's a smoother transition between um, various positions of the potentiometer while these guys are at fixed frequencies in stepped chromatic and stepped pentatonic mappings. And, and I, that was, I, I can play some samples um, later. And then this is also the mapping for that. This is much simpler. Um, you've got 53, or sorry, 54 values. You map your um, input, well, where on your input, what ratio of that, and then take the integer, divide between um, this fraction. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. But I don't know what this rate shifting of three, I think that's dividing by eight. So you've got, I, I think there was 128 in here. Anyways, but yeah, I don't know what this is doing. So, once you've done that, then there's two timers that are defined. And this BV, underscore BV, that's bit value. So you take a, a number, that's going to be an integer, or that's just going to be a number, and it'll give you the bit value of it, and then you're oaring these bit values together. So instead of left shifting and right shift, or sorry, left shifting, uh, X number of bits, WGM20 bits, 
by using a lift shift operator, they've built that in and that gets compiled out anyway, so there's no speed um, penalty for using it, apparently. PW and yeah, so pin loads. Yeah, pin three, what what did we pin three? And then for these guys, it's the sync control. That's the thing that controls the pitch, if you will. The gain frequency, grain one, grain, well, these are the two grain frequencies that are going to be interacting. So you give it a, um, a frequency and then a decay. How fast is it going to decay? And for both of them, and then that gives you your, your sound, which is adjustable. And then the sync control gives you the pitch made from that bass tone. Just update the parameters. Okay, yeah, so my read, sync control, so that's just the pin that this is on, in this case it's four. Um, if you were using pentatonic this, you would uncomment comment this out. And so it's just reading from these, dividing that by two, dividing that by eight, dividing that by two, and dividing that by four. And that corresponds to the length of these tables, I'm guessing. Yeah. This bit shifting is pretty wild. I, I'm going to have to actually write some of this out and think about it with a piece of pen and paper in order to understand it. Good grief. It's clever. Well, it's doing something. I don't know why, but I'm presuming that it's doing something that's clever. Converted into a triangle wave. So how, how does this work? So if you right shift 7, uh, 64, 128, I forget, and then you're ending it with all ones, doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the uh, all that bit shifting math that is happening in order to create the various uh, um, triangle waves that are needed in order to create this oscillator, um, digital oscillator, I have to really start digging into those because I couldn't really uh, read, uh, figure them out just on the first read. So, um, anyways, uh, still, I think the next job will be to do some research on how that uh, those pitch shifting operators work because I need to understand that in order to move this thing over onto an ESP32. So, thanks for watching.
Yeah, uh, you, every kid should have one of these. <laughs> that thing's awesome. 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 Um, literally. Uh, you've got five 10K pots around. Throw them onto an Arduino and hook it up to your speakers because, wow. That is fun. <laughs>